Alright, good morning everybody. My name is Cameron Pittman and today we'll be exploring Portal 2 in the Portal 2 Puzzle Maker as they relate to physics education. Now here we are inside the level described in the previous screen. Uh, in this level the whole point is to reach the door at the other side and in order to do that we can't simply portal over there because we have dark colored panels that won't work. Instead we'll have to use a different game mechanic to get there. We'll be using something called a momentum fling. A momentum fling takes advantage of the fact that portals in this game conserve momentum. That is, whatever velocity you have going into one portal, you will have as you exit another. Here we are placing portals at the bottom of a pit and on top of an angled panel. Uh, in order to reach the other side of the level, we'll have to pick up speed as we fall down into this pit and into this blue portal. We will then fly out of this orange, port uh, orange portal over, over the pit, over the water, and hopefully all the way to the other side. We don't have to just guess though, we don't have to just try it out, we can actually do a little bit of physics ahead of time to figure out whether or not this is going to work. We'll be using conservation of energy first to figure out how fast we'll be going when we reach the bottom of the pit. Conservation of energy says that our potential energy at the top of this pit is equal to our kinetic energy at the bottom. So we can set mgh, the equation for potential energy, to 1 half mv squared, which is the equation for kinetic energy. Solving for v, we find that v is equal to the square root of 2gh. We can go ahead and plug in some numbers here. g inside the game world is going to be equal to about 4.7 units per second squared, or about 4.7 of those panels you can see on the wall per second squared. Our, um, our uh, h is of course going to be 4, we can see 4 panels there. So plugging in, we find that by the time we reach the bottom of the pit, we should have a velocity of about 6.1 units per second. So, as we enter the blue portal and exit the orange portal, we should be going 6.1 units per second. Okay, let's go ahead and turn around, hop up on this observation deck, and do a little bit more math. Okay, looking at our angle panel over here on the side, we can see that it's at an angle of 45 degrees. Uh, being at an angle of 45 degrees and knowing how fast we're going, we can very easily figure out exactly how fast we're going in the x and y directions. In the x direction, of course, we'll be going our initial velocity times the cosine of our angle theta, which will be 45 degrees. And, of course, our y velocity is going to be equal to our initial velocity times the sine of our angle theta, which is still 45 degrees. Now that we know how fast we'll be going in both x and y direction, we can figure out how far we'll be going across the pit. As described in the problem, we need to make it at least six panels, or six units, across the pit. Knowing that, uh, let's go ahead and start by finding out how long we're going to be in the air. Let's use the equation delta y is equal to our y velocity times time minus one-half gt squared. Let's make things a little bit easier on ourselves first, though, before we do any math. Let's take a look at our panel over here, our angled panel, and let's compare its height to the height of the ledge on the other side of the room that we're trying to reach. Looking back, we can see that our angled panel over here on the right is just slightly higher, just slightly higher than our ledge on the other side. However, as, as it is, we'll be using a few approximations here, and one of those is going to be that delta y is equal to zero. It, is, it isn't exactly correct, but we aren't looking for exact answers. We just want to have a good idea of how far we're going to go. So let's assume delta y is equal to zero. If it is, we can solve for time very easily. Time is then going to be equal to two times our y velocity divided by g. Now that we know how long we're going to be in the air, it's a very simple matter of using how fast we'll be going in the x direction and that time to figure out how far we'll be going. Our um, equation for how far we'll be going in the x direction is going to be delta x is equal to our x velocity times time. Uh, plugging in for what we know, we find that delta x is going to be equal to 8 panels, which is about that far. We can see that we'll make it a little bit past the edge of the ledge. We should make it far enough to make the jump. Of course, all this physics doesn't mean anything without actually trying it out. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and hop down here, drop one portal at the bottom of this pit, put our orange portal on our angled panel, and I'm going to pick up our trusty companion cube and drop it into our blue portal at the bottom of this pit. There it goes. And we can watch it fly across the room just landing on the ledge and then rolling a little past. Now you'll notice that it didn't quite make it the full eight panels. It didn't quite make it there the full eight. It made the ledge, but not the full eight. We'll discuss that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and follow the cube down here across the pit and landing on the other side. Now you'll notice I landed about right here. 
I actually did make it the full eight panels, almost exactly the eight panels, but the cube did not. The reason for this is that the cube does not feel the force of friction, or excuse me, the cube does feel the force of friction in the game, while players do not. This is an interesting quirk and allows teachers and uh, teachers and students to investigate the differences between objects that fly under the influence of friction and air resistance and objects that do not. I'm going to go ahead and put our cube on the button here to end the level. Okay, and we've beaten the level. Just as a quick recap, let's go over what concepts of physics we went we went through in this one very simple test in a level that I built within about five or ten minutes in which any student could build in class as well. In this very quick level, we use conservation of energy, we use projectile motion, we use friction, and we used uh, trigonometry in order to beat this level. A very simple one. We did the math, we did the work, we found out what happened, and it actually does relate to real world physics and is a very interesting and fun application of physics and easy to use inside the classroom. Okay, guys, thanks, and that's going to be it for today.